All right, continuing with the 2023 Clemson recruiting class. Last video was about quarterback Christopher Vizina, four-star out of Alabama. Going to be a really good player for us. This video is going to be about the running backs. Clemson signed two of them, both of them. Three-star running backs, one from South Carolina, one from Alabama. We're going to start with Jarvis Green uh, since he's from South Carolina. Uh, Dutch Fork from Columbia, where I'm from. Um, playing for the powerhouse Dutch Fork program, the pinnacle of high school football in South Carolina. Um, I think both these guys are really good players, probably a little bit better than what the recruiting rankings suggest. Neither one of them stick out that much to me. I don't think they're in that category of Will Shipley or Phil Moffa, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and start with the film on, uh, on Jarvis Green. And so with me, what I don't see with Jarvis, I don't see like the elite speed like at all. Like in, in this video, uh, in this play, just not being able to pull away right there. I mean, he does break those tackles against high school DBs, uh, but you would like to see a high school running back be able to pull away. Um, you know, I think the best aspect of his game is actually his hands. I think he can be a really good receiving threat for us. If his stats coming out of high school, he had over 500 receiving yards. 247 only has him listed at 5'9", about a buck 90. So he's not a very big kid. Um, so, you know, I don't think he's going to be the bruiser of like a Phil Moffa, for example. Uh, and he certainly doesn't have the speed that you would like for someone that's slightly undersized. I do think he's, you know, a good back. Uh, I don't think he's someone that's going to be... Uh, you know, a great running back like like I think of a Will Shipley or a Phil Moffa. Um, you know, he reminds me a lot of Mikey Dukes, if we you know if we can remember him, another you know three star kid that we got on really late, offered really late. That's who he really reminds me of. Nothing really elite jumps out at you, but overall a pretty good player. The thing that I love most about Jarvis Green is the fact that he's clearly a Clemson fan. I mean, the kid waited and waited for the Clemson offer. Clearly wanted to come here, like like Antonio Williams last year, was just a kid that really was desperate to receive that Clemson offer, and as soon as he did, he was ready to sign. So you gotta love being able to bring a kid that uh, desperately wants to be um, part of the program. So I'm pretty sure he grew up a Clemson fan. Um, you know, for me, he's he, you know, get watching the film, nothing really jumps out. High school running backs typically look really good on film, anyways. What I look for mostly is, is speed. Um, you know, this play right here, except for to cut off the people and then to break this one for a touchdown. That was his best play on the film so far, in my opinion. This is where he's going to do most of his damage right here, like I said earlier. I think he can really be a threat in the passing game. He certainly was a Dutch fork, and, and I can't wait to see how Garrett Riley might utilize him in this offense. Uh, he's a pretty dynamic player. Um, just I don't know, just just lacked anything elite in my opinion when I watched the tape. Clearly, he ran all over Spartanburg because Spartanburg's been on this film a lot. But I think he's he don't, I don't know if he's someone that's going to contribute for us this year. If I'm being honest, uh, you know I think obviously Shipley and Moff are going to be that one-two punch. To me, they're the best running back duo or one of the best running back duos in the country. Um, so they're going to get uh, the bulk of the carries. The coaches really love Dominic Thomas, a former walk-on, and then Keith Adams Jr. last year. The coaches like him. Uh, presumably, he'll be in year two, so he, he should have a slight advantage over Jarvis Green and Jay Haynes. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I'm rooting for Jarvis Green to be a lot better than, than what I think he's going to be. Um, I just don't I, – I, I just I, – I don't know. I just don't see – we've had NFL running backs in the past – you know, whether it be C.J. Spiller, Andre Ellington, Wayne Gallman, you know, Shipley and Moffer are definitely going to be those guys. And Travis Etienne, I could almost forget, uh, you know, best running back in school history. I just, I don't know, I don't see that. Uh, I don't see this as a, a future, you know, uh, NFL player. I just, I think without having elite size and not having elite speed, that combination uh, doesn't really work that well. Uh, but again, I, I, I mean, I've never, I've never wanted someone to prove me more wrong. He seems like a really good kid, and obviously I love the fact that he grew up a Clemson fan, so uh, I wish him all all the best. I hope he's a really good player. The production was insane at, at Dutch Fork. I mean, rushing for over 2,000 yards, having over 500 receiving yards as a senior, I think close to 40 touchdowns, state championship. Uh, that's impressive. So 
The kid's certainly a winner. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to give his uh, best effort. Going to come in, do well academically, and, and do well in the Clemson community. So I'm excited about that aspect for him. But that's Jarvis Green. Uh, moving on, Jamarius Haynes. Um, this is a kid that really, I think, was just insanely underrated. It, it felt like he, when Clemson offered him, he didn't have any uh, stars at all. And so I feel like in, in how recruiting goes is if a kid doesn't get offers early, they're usually not going to become a really good uh recruit according to the sites so i think he was just a kid that was highly underrated and, uh, and overlooked early in the process because his film is just really really good um like to me he's a guy that that uh, he doesn't have that four three speed but he's definitely in the four four range so he's faster than jarvis green and also uh, a little bit bigger um but i'm uh you know we'll see on the film i'm certainly really impressed with jay haynes if i had to project who i think is going to be better the two running backs i would pick Jay Haynes over over Jarvis Green. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and uh, and get to his film. You know, two four seven doesn't even have him listed in the top one thousand, which I think is pretty pretty crazy. Um, yeah, he's just a guy that was slept. This offense, the scheme is just is atrocious. But you know, just he looks like a very smooth runner, powerful. I mean, just. Ran, runs this kid over very smooth like Jarvis Green I think he could also do a lot of damage in, in the passing game this plays epitomizes this um, yeah run after the catch easy touchdown you can sort of see on film that he's definitely got uh, more speed than uh, than Jarvis Green another play lined up a wide receiver I th you know the, the coaches did a really good job getting both of these kids as um, guys who are going to be able to, to catch the ball at the backfield, make plays. And, feel, and it definitely uh, works well with Garrett Riley coming in as the offense coordinator. Um, having more dynamic running backs is certainly a good thing, uh, given his dynamic ability to call plays, to scheme it up, a prop, to scheme it up properly. Yeah, I think, I think both of them are very similar to each other. Uh, Jameer's Haynes is a bigger faster beautiful cut right there and then again just pulling away i don't think jarvis green has that type of ability to just pull away from defenders like jamarius haynes does but you saw that cut um and he just took off after that that's what you like to see he's a guy that definitely can uh, be a home run threat a speed burst right there again i don't know if jarvis green quite makes that play um or at least beats the guy uh beats the corner you saw that burst as soon as he hit the hole, he was gone. Um, this is next level speed. You have to have it if you're an undersized running back. Again, another burst, full speed. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's, the fact that this kid is only a three star, now you're ranked the top 1000 is crazy. His his stats in high school are uh, insane as well. Um, I mean, there was one game where he had over, I think 450 rushing yards and, and four touchdowns. It was ridiculous. I think he did finish his year with, with just under 3,000 yards and then another 40 touchdowns, just like Jarvis Green did. So both of them just crazy productive in high school. And you can see it on the tape. Just, I mean, he's clearly the best player on the field. No one's even close. Um, to me, he's a kid that could probably honestly uh, be that number three back for us this year. His film looks a lot better than Keith Adams Jr. did last year. I'd be very interested to see who, who's that number three back going to be for us. You can just see, see t right there, like that's just immediate explosion, burst, 4-4 four, four type speed. Um, yeah, that's Jamarius Haynes. So I think if you look at the film, I think it's obvious to me that Jamarius Haynes, I think they call him Jay Haynes, slightly better than, than Jarvis Green. I think he'll come in, uh, maybe have, him, have a chance to play for that number three running back spot, which we desperately need. You know, last year, go with Shipley, Maffa, and Pace, even though Kobe was hurt for a lot of the year, uh, was very comfortable knowing that you have three quality running backs. This year, we know that we got two. We know we got two monsters. Um, but after them, you know, it's, we don't know, right? Um, all we can hear is the coaches like former walk-on Dominic Thomas, the coaches like Keith Adams Jr., and then these two incoming freshmen. You know, the biggest hurdle they're going to have to make is, is, is pass blocking. They virtually do none of that in high school. Um, 
Uh, so, you know, not ever doing it uh, in high school, then having to come on and block linebackers and defensive ends in college is obviously a tough task. That's the biggest learning curve for them outside of obviously getting inside the playbook. Um, but if I had to take a pick on who I think uh, is going to be um, ready to go next year, it's got to be Jay Haynes. You know, he can be that number three running back for us. I think he's very, very underrated as a recruit. It's hard for me to imagine that there's 50 running backs in high school that are better than him. I just think he was a kid that went uh, under the radar. Um, but those two running backs, Jarvis Green, Jamarius Haynes, I would like to say overall running back recruiting over the last two years with C.J. Spiller, it, it, it hasn't gone well. And I know a lot of Clemson fans are aware of this. Uh, we're just missing on our top targets. You know, C.J. offered a lot of kids last year. I do think primarily Clemson was after Trevor Etienne. Uh, and then when he went to Florida, you know, I think Keith Adams Jr. was really the only one available for us at that point. This year offered several guys as well, missed on a bunch of them. We keep missing to Alabama and Georgia. Naturally, that's going to happen. Uh, but, you know, we can't just keep missing on our top targets. It doesn't seem like that's the formula for success, right? Um, I think we can all admit that. Uh, something has to change. And I know that I know CJ has one offer out in 2024. The kid that they're really after, he was at the uh, junior day this past weekend. Um, you know, I, I watched his tape. He he looks like a really good running back in my opinion. So they're after a really good one. CJ's got to be able to land someone in this class. We're probably going to need an immediate impact in that 2024 class. Um, and so overall, these last two years, it's it's been disappointing. 2024 has to change, and if it doesn't. Obviously, the portal's there. We got to use it. If uh, one of these three guys aren't ready, you know, for us to get Adams, Keith Adams Jr., Jamarius Haynes, Jarvis Green, although they may all three be underrated, uh, you know, signing three running backs around the top 1,000, around 1,000 ranking, three stars, low level three stars with very minimal power five offers. I don't know. We can't just keep doing that and expect uh, success. We have to start hitting home runs with these big four-star, five-star running backs. And if we don't, transfer portal has to be there. But that's my opinion. Uh, next video is going to be wide receivers. I think we signed a stellar wide receiver class, four of them. Um, three and a half maybe because one of them is going to play cornerback as well. Uh, but uh, love the receiver class. I think uh, all three of them are definitely underrated. But be on the lookout for that next video. For this one, if you can give it a thumbs up, comment. I would love to uh, talk about what you think about Jarvis Green and Jameer Saints. I do have friends that, that think Jarvis Green is going to be an exceptional running back, and we, we butt heads over this um, right now. So tell me who you like. Tell me what you think, where I'm wrong, where I'm right. Um, and if you could, hit that subscribe button. It's really important. I would love to be able to do this um, you know, more often, and uh, being able to monetize this channel uh, would be pretty awesome. So. Do me a favor, it's free. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, check out the next one. All right, thanks.